Debra Berevichiez. I'd like to walk, through, walk you through three phenomena in the world that most of us experience as beautiful things. Let's start with music. Most of us see it as a form of entertainment. It helps us communicate our feelings and share them with our friends. We can record it, dance to it. A second thing I want to explore with you is the sun. We usually think of the sun as rising and setting. It's a source of heat, of light. We know it lies at the center of our, solar, uh, of our solar system. It's a pretty big star, and it takes us about a year for planet Earth to go around it. The third thing I want to explore with you is ocean waves. We all know there are a big surge of energy that travels in the surface of the ocean created by winds. They can reach pretty vast distances as well as heights of about 100 feet. But for somebody wearing the X-ray physics glasses or X-ray vision from a physicist, all these phenomena, while on the surface look quite different, they all behave quite similarly. So how does a physicist see sound, for example? Sound or music is a wave or can be seen as a wave. Waves are simply wiggling or oscillations of something, vibrations of something. In the case of sound, when I shout, my vocal cords exert a pressure on the molecules of the air right outside my mouth, and they push them away from them. Now, that set of molecules pushes the next set of molecules of air, and those, in turn, will push the next set of molecules away from them and so on, until the air pressure, those vibrations, will reach my ear, and then I can hear what I, you can hear what I'm saying. So the way to read this graph is to see that on the horizontal axis, we see space, and the, the troughs and the valleys of this uh, wiggly wave here show you the amount of air pressure. So it varies from very uh, compressed molecules to ones that are freely moving around space, so they have low pressure. Again, how would a physicist look at the sun, light? Similarly, it can see it as a wave. In this case, what's wiggling and what's changing, it's actually electric and magnetic fields. But again, it's a wave and the waves of light can travel through vacuum. They don't even need a medium to get to our eyes. We also discussed water waves. Think of water waves in the ocean or simply ripples in a pond. As you see, the water goes up and down as the wave tra travels through it. It's important to note that the molecules at each point in space only go up and down, like a little duck in a pond. It only goes up and down as the wave passes underneath it. So each individual molecule does not travel the whole distance of the wave. It just moves up and down, transferring the energy of the wave through it. As you can see, all these are different kinds of waves, but waves all the same. So I think, actually, the best way to understand what a wave is, is to become one. <laughs> oh, can you go back one slide, please? Oh, here we go. So you're all familiar with the stadium wave, and we're going to recreate it here in the auditorium. We're going to start from that side, and so you all know what to do. Okay, ready, set, go. Woo! Awesome, great job. <laughs> as you can see, as you can see, just like water waves, none of the individual people here had to travel across the auditorium. The energy of the wave traveled through with you guys only moving up and down from your seat. If we could forward to the um, next slide, okay, I'll do that. So if we 
see if we can explore that light and sound are both waves, then we can come up with connections and patterns. So for example, we're all pretty familiar with the fact that we can point light in a narrow beam, right? So we can point here this laser beam, as you can see. But seldom we see that we can point sound, right? Probably some of us have never seen it. But if we're both are waves, we should in principle be able to do that. And in fact, I'm going to show you that you can. This is a holosonic speaker here that I'm going to use to beam sound all around the auditorium. So I'm going to start that way, and when it's beaming towards you, just like a laser beam, you'll be able to hear the sound pretty loud. But as soon as it moves away from you, the sound you hear will be pretty reduced or almost none. Okay, ready? Cool. <laughs> Another idea that explores the connection between light waves and sound waves is the idea of the fact that usually we think of hearing and vision as two completely different things. However, vision works by sending a source of light, sending waves onto the objects that surround us, those waves get reflected and come into our eyes, and that's how we see. But if light and sound are the same thing, meaning waves, we should be able to see the world with sound waves too. Well, in fact, that happens. That's called echolocation, and bats and dolphins use it. This bat is blind, but it sends sound waves that get bounced off of objects, like the insect here, which is his prey, and as the, the sound bounces off of those objects, it localizes them and maps his surroundings. Humans can do that too. So here you'll see my friend Juan Ruiz. He's completely blind by birth, and yet he uses this technique of making clicking sounds with his mouth that send the sound off, they bounce back, and he maps his surrounding that way, so he can bike, box, and ski. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> Not, <laughs> See, not all of the parallels of sound and light have been solved. For example, we know that the speed of sound is about 340 meters per second. Fast but not that fast compared to light. The speed of light is about a million times faster than that. So we have been able to break the sound barrier. In this case, you see an airplane actually traveling faster th than sound, and those white molecules of air vapor there are the sound waves all pressured in front of the plane as it goes through them. Now, have we been able to travel faster than light? No. And if Einstein was alive today, if we'd ask him, he would say that's absolutely impossible. As you can see, it's something that we haven't really solved. If light and sound are the same, then in principle, it could be possible. So what I want to tell you is that by wearing these physics X-ray glasses and having that vision of looking at the commonalities between things that look on the surface quite different. By searching and finding the underlying patterns in nature, you can actually have access to a bunch of incredible applications and possibilities. So physics is not just about waves, but essentially it is the art of finding that those deeper connections, what's beneath the surface. And not only that, but when you actually do that, the world appears even more beautiful. Thank you.